Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another episode of the Innocence Redeemed Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Bergman, and today's show wasn't exactly planned. This is kind of just a little bit of a mini cast. Um, I've received some emails reaching out um, about fear, and first of all, I wanted to give you all a big thanks and blessing in Jesus' name because um, I received a great outpouring of support, and I really just want you all to know that I am very appreciative of your support, and I believe the Lord is very pleased with those of you who reached out um, to this ministry and gave me words of support, um, not just to me, but also to Glinda. So I've received some emails um, in regards to people who are struggling with being concerned with the things coming upon us, and I wanted to reach out to you all today and just do something quick for you while I'm working on another podcast that I've um, been putting together all week, off and on. Um, I know some people are experiencing um, the element of fear in their lives, and they're not sure what they can do about it. They're not sure, um, you know, how to get through. And I know that when you're going through a wilderness or you're going through refining, those feelings can be compounded even more because you're not sure what to expect. You're not sure where things are going. But it's important that we remember to keep our eyes on Jesus no matter what. You know, if we're focusing, if we're, currently, if we're constantly focusing on the storm, the things coming, the news items, like they're going to be persecuting people, they're possibly going to be rounding people up. I know um, what just happened in Canada, people are probably concerned about that. Um, no doubt a lot of you have heard about that. And you can't focus constantly on the storm. Stay vigilant, yes. But if you're focusing more on the things that are going on, it's going to be dragging you down. And if you're watching TV all the time, if you're watching the news and it's bothering you, if it's getting to the point where it's overwhelming you, shut that off. Shut it off. Don't, have, don't watch it. You know, even with what I do, I sometimes, I'm paying attention to things to relate them to what I've been given in the spirit and in the word. But even then, you know, you know, Glenda does this, other, other ministries do this. We have to, we have to take a break too. You know, we're only human. You know, we can't, it's, it can be overwhelming if you don't step back. And it doesn't mean, you know, throw your cautions to the wind and just go do whatever you want and you know, down a gallon of bourbon or vodka. No, I'm not, that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is sometimes the better thing to do is focus on the verses in God's word. You know, focus on what he says about fear. You know, I've said it before, um, Peter, you know, when he, when he saw Jesus walking on the water, Jesus told Peter to come to him. But Peter was so focused on the storm and the treacherous waves around him that he took his eyes off Jesus, and he began to sink. And do you know what the Lord said? Does everybody remember what the Lord said? He said, why have you so little faith? You see, when we're focused on the Lord's word, when we're focused on his promises, we're not going to be focusing on those waves, all right? And you're probably thinking, well, Ray, how do you get through it? What do you do? Well, I know these things are coming. I've accepted they're coming. I don't know what's coming and when. I only know the season that we are in. And my focus is on the Lord. You know, every morning I get up, I pray before I do anything else. Well, I, sometimes I do other things first, like if I have to run out because I like to get things done early. But, you know, and that's another thing. When I ran out to the store recently, I had to go get coffee and a few other things. And, and I just went to a local Walgreens and I saw a man. And he was like standing 30 feet back from me. And I'm like, wow, you know, this, this element of fear, it needs to stop. And it, this, this whole thing, and he was wearing a mask, and, you know, he had, he, I, I don't even know if he had gloves on. I can't remember, but you could just tell he looked scared because I looked at him. At, I, I took a kind of, kind of like a side glance at him, and I'm like, why is he so afraid? And this is what our media has done. And that's what I was talking about with turning things off. You know, if it's getting to the point where you go out and you are suspect of everybody, Look what it's doing. It's dividing everybody. So first of all, it's got evil behind it just for that reason alone. That's not including that even if you're home by yourself. I mean, I see people riding in their cars with masks on. I saw people social distancing their cars. I mean, are you for real? You know, that's the kind of fear I'm talking about. It's like when the enemy has ramped up the fear on you so much. 
that you are sacrificing yourself. Because if you keep living in that never-ending pattern of fear, that's going to drag you down. And you don't want that, all right? So that's another reason you need to keep your eyes on Jesus' word. You need to remember his words. You need to remember the scriptures on fear. And if it helps, um, you know, recite them every day. I do Psalm 91 every day. I, I've read it on um, the podcast before. Um, you know, whatever will help you to remember the verse, keep saying them, speak them out loud, and don't just speak them out loud, believe them. You know, holding on to worry, it brings undue stress. And that's 80% of the battle. You know, as humans, we're natural worriers, so, and, and now more so than ever. It's natural to have a concern because you want to know how everything's going to work out. And let's admit, you know, we've been long now in a time where nothing is certain. You know, we don't know what's going to happen from day to day. You know, and this is another thing. Not only is there a lot of propaganda out there that's causing that fear, a lot of it's a distraction. That's exactly what it is. It's not just the fear. It's a distraction from the Lord and his word. And when you're focused on a distraction, your focus is not on him. So remember that. You know, worry can lead to fear because fear is produced in regards to the unknown. It's the unknown that is what scares us. But if we're focused on more on God's promises that's in, written in his word, we're not going to be focused on the unknown because we have faith and we know. Remember that faith and trust are the opposite of fear. Okay? So if you trust in the Lord's word, you're not going to be afraid of these things that are coming. And when you know you can't do anything about it, what, why are you worrying about it anyway? You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 27, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? In other words, what good is worrying going to do you if you can't really affect any change about it except for what you believe in your faith? You know, go, moving on in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is one area I have had to learn to focus on in my walk, is not worrying too far ahead. Because if we're worrying about what's going to happen, I don't know, two months from now, three months from now, we're locking down, folks. We're not, you know, we're not getting anything done. We're not doing our works by faith. We're not. We don't feel like doing anything. We're not motivated. We're shutting down. And we want to avoid that. That's another reason, because it leads to depression, and you don't want that depression. Remember, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and hope. You know, when we go to heaven, have any of you ever wondered if the things that we worry about here on earth are even going to matter? We're going to be shown things that we worried about, and we're going to think, oh my gosh, that was so ridiculous. Why was I worrying about that? I know I have. I don't know if ever, any of you have. Because I've, I've, I've sat back and I've said, Lord, why was I worrying about that? That was so dumb of me. Why was I focused on something that doesn't even matter? And this is another way the enemy attacks us, by the way. You know, he tries to get us focused on things that we don't need to worry about. You know, I've seen it, you know, a text might come across a certain way, or you know, a comment might come across a certain way. and at first, I'll think something of it, and then I'll turn around and be like, I was totally wrong about it. And the Lord will show me that, you know, you're worrying for nothing. And he's told me time and time again, you know, he'll reassure me in spirit, don't worry, my son, don't worry. I'll take care of it, don't worry. And he does. You see, you have to believe what his word says. And if you believe what his word says, and some people have said, well, how do you hear from the Lord, or why doesn't the Lord speak to me? Well, because if you're wavering in your faith, then you're not truly believing what he has promised us. How is he going to help you? How can he help you with that? You have to determine, you have to know where your faith is. You have to really trust him. And so this is the element, this is at the core of our faith. It's the element of the core of our beliefs, to believe him at what his word says. You know, and if you're struggling with faith, call on him. 1 Peter 5, verse 6 through 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Give him your concerns. Give them to him daily, twice daily. Some people pray three times daily. I pray throughout the day. If I feel led in the spirit, like if, 
let's say that a brother texts me. I have a you know a good brother in Christ. He texts me. He'll say, "Hey, I'm I'm studying for this." He'll say, "Can you pray for me?" And I'll say, "Yeah, yeah, brother, absolutely." And I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll pray. You know, pray for others, pray for yourself, but also pray for others. And remember, folks, to keep praying for the lost as well. Intercede for them. Keep them in your prayers. Because there's going to be a lot of people now, they didn't previously know something was going on, or maybe they were in denial. Whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be, and whatever your, you know, concerns were about that person, or your opinions of that person, drop those concerns. Okay? Because the Lord cares about all of his children. And he wants us to pray for one another. Don't sit there and think that you're too mighty and good to pray for someone or to try to even encourage somebody. Because, you know, everyone's going through an element of these end times. They're feeling it. It's the weight. It's the wearing down of the saints. Um, I think y'all remember, you know, Glinda, Glinda Lomax, she just touched on that in the last podcast we did. It's the wearing down. We need to stand strong. And what we know about our Lord Jesus, we cannot be focused on everything else going on around us. We need to be praying to him, giving him our concerns daily. I give him every single concern I have, folks, and you should be too. Whether I need something, whether something's bothering me, or I have a wrong preconceived notion about something, because sometimes I'll feel like something's off, and I take it to him. I'm like, Lord, I'm not sure. You know, what should I feel about this? I'm giving this to you. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So remember that. Now, also remember, by living in his way, you are dwelling, you are abiding in him. You are, by living in his way, that is, you're doing his will and abiding, then you're in his protection. Proverbs 1, verse 33, but whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. That's what I'm talking about with the prayer. That's what I'm talking about by reciting his word out loud and believing what it says. And continue to do that until you believe it. You may struggle at first, but that's okay. Keep going. Keep going. Everyone has, everyone is at a different part in their walk. You cannot sit there and think, oh, it's useless. What's the point? If you do that, you've already given up. You've already... You've already succumbed to that defeat before you've even tried. You've got to keep trying. You've got to keep on those shoes of endurance. Ephesians 6, you've got to keep on that body armor. You know, believing his word, Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Remember just a moment ago, guys, that I was saying that I call, I talk to him throughout the day. I don't do, I don't, you don't have to necessarily go into a formal prayer to pray. You know, you don't have to be down on your knees and, you know, your hands full. No, you can talk to him while you're doing things. He wants you to talk to him. Just acknowledge him in all your ways. Because sometimes I've been doing something and I'll just be, you know, starting to think thoughts and I won't even be praying and, and he'll speak to me. No, well, that's a blessing. Because of all the other times I have spent with him, you know, sometimes he'll freely give me advice on what to do. And he'll reassure me. And that's what you want. When you're walking close to him, he is going to guide you. And you will start hearing him, but you have to believe him, guys. You can't be wavering. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. What I was just saying, if you're building up, if you're building your relationship with him, he is your strength and refuge. Call on him, and he will help you in that day of trouble, in that time of trouble. And going in with the prayer again, Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. That is part of the abiding, guys. You know, praying to him, giving him your concerns. Um, you know, abide if you're abiding in him, and you're casting your prayers on him, and you're giving thanks to what he has done for you, you know, he's going to help you through anything you're going through. It doesn't matter what it is. And whether you're scared or whether you're concerned maybe about a situation that's arised, you know, you might feel all hope is lost. But remember, focus on him, because the Lord's going to carry you through. You know, 
a lot of us, you know, we were in the world for so long. And we got into such a, a, a mindset of being able to affect outcomes. I know I did um, years ago. I, before I went into my wilderness, I always took on everything myself. You know, I always planned ahead. I always made plans that um, what you know with what I was going to do, and you know, for the most part, I was able to control what was going on around me. But we're entering a season now where we're feeling like that is being taken from us. You know, he's showing us essentially our need for him. Okay. So remember, when you're when you're feeling like you're getting fear and anxiety, he's showing you why you need him. Okay, he's showing you the world is not your friend. That the world, it is very volatile. You know, it can change on a whim. It could be here. Something could be here today, gone tomorrow. We could go to bed. We may not wake up here, and that's also another reason you want to abide in him. You know, a lot of people right now they're depressed. They're sad. They're there's a lot of people out there thinking about taking their lives. You know, maybe they lost everything due to the lockdowns. Maybe they have lost somebody in their family due to this, you know, cult jab that they were pushing. And because they have given, they've gotten to such hopelessness and bought into that fear, it has literally ruined them. You can't let that happen to you. The Lord is not going to let the godly be moved, okay? That's what it says, Psalm 55, 22. That's what the last part of it says when it says, he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. You know, there's been times where I've had concerns about things or how they're going to work out. And I'll pray and I'll be upset. And suddenly in my spirit, I'll start hearing praise songs. Um, I don't know if anybody else experiences this, but I know I do. And that's him reminding me that he's there. That's his love. With his love, he will calm all of your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. He will calm you. You know, there's been times I've laid in my bed and wept because of my situation or certain situations, you know, just going on. It may not, it's, it's not necessarily anything, you know, related to what I do. It could just be a pressure that I'm feeling. Because sometimes I do believe those of us walking close to him, we feel his sadness because there's a lot of people out there who are lost and they're going in the wrong direction. You know, folks, my own brother, you know, he, he drinks every night almost. Uh, you know, I've tried to witness to him. My mother's tried to witness to him. He just does what he wants. And all I can do is pray for him. And I have a very grave concern because I don't know if I'm going to be around. You know, I don't know when all of us are going home. I don't know how the Lord's going to take us out and when. The Lord could say, I'm sending you here to do my work. I'm promoting you and you're not going to be around. I'm removing you from that situation so that, you know, he can't use you as a crutch when his life gets rough. You know, I don't know how the Lord will work. I just know that he's going to take care of it because he's reassured me. And I can't stop praying. But see, there's a lot of people, sometimes we feel that sadness that the Lord has. Because, you know, someone like my brother, that's just one, you know, that is just one facet of it. That is just one avenue. That is just one person. Imagine millions who are involved in idol worship or they're, um, you know, shacking up or hooking up or, you know, their dependence is on alcohol because their job stresses them out or they're unhappy with their life. And the Lord has been doing all these things to get their attention, but they're still not getting it. Everything going on in the world is showing people what time it is. And yet, unfortunately, many people run the opposite way. Rather than running to him, they're running from him. And that's what I'm concerned about when I see somebody in a drugstore wearing a mask and they're 30 feet away from me and they're like, oh, oh, oh get away. Oh, you know, I start to worry about that person because when things get real bad, someone like that. When the deception comes on the scene, they may fall for taking the mark, and they're going to be condemned if they do. There is no repenting from that. At that point, you know, you've made your bed. You know, the word's clear on what it says about that. 
And I'm not going to go into Revelation. I've done that before, but that's one reason it concerns me. And it's hard for me to be relatable to that because I don't walk around living my life like that. I'm like, if I have to live my life in so much fear like that, I'd rather be dead, honestly. Lord, take me from this earth because I cannot live my life like that. And you know what I'm saying is, guys, the Lord has empowered us to overcome these things. Remember, he overcame the world. He has foreseen everything. He knows how it's going to end. He knows each and every one of our lives. So if you know that he's got you in the palm of his hand, why are you wanting to be why are you afraid when there's no reason to be if you trust in who he is? Matthew 11 verse 28. Then Jesus said, "Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest." Has anybody ever been so upset? And I know I have when where you'll feel so overwhelmed, but the moment you'll call out, because I know there's been times I'm so tired, I haven't even been able to pray. I'll just say, oh, Lord, I'm just so tired. I'm so tired. I'm tired of being tired. And I'll hear him tell me, rest, my son. And I'll feel his presence upon me. And I'm calm. You know, I know at that moment I'm in his hands. You know, if you're making it your business to be about his business daily, he's going to give you that rest. He is. He is true. He is faithful. You know, Jesus is who he says he is. That's what I meant by earlier when I said, you know, don't just say his word. Don't just read his word. Believe it. Believe it. And live it. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, this is verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's been times I've been anxious about something, or I'll, still, I'll, I'll start speaking it, and I'll, I'll stop speaking. Because I just feel the Lord saying, you know, I've got it under control. I've got it under control, son. I've got it under control. I've heard you. I know about it. I'm taking care of it. I'm working. Trust in me. He has literally said, trust me. Trust in me. That's how I can tell you these things, guys, because I've lived it. And remember, I said about living for him. This is part of Philippians 4. If you look at verse 9, it says, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the peace of God will be with you. Abide in him and live his word. Give the concerns to him. It will help you. It will, it's like talking to your best friend or your husband or your wife. It's the same thing. It's spiritual. And you're drawing near to him when you do it. You're building your relationship with him, guys. Keep that in mind. And he likes that. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to strengthen your relationship with him. It's all about trusting him, believing him. And remember what I said earlier. I talk to him all day. It doesn't always have to be a formal prayer. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. So whenever you're worried, whenever you're concerned, sometimes if, if you get in a habit of putting the trust in him, you're not going to have that worry and fear because you know these words. They are on your heart. And you won't be thinking about everything else. You might see something and be like, well, it is what it is. You know what? I know that I trust in the living God. I don't, I'm not going to worry about this. What good is it going to do me to worry? I can't change it. It's in scripture. It's going to happen. And then remember what I was saying about trusting in his word and praying it. And that when you're so sometimes so tired, if you're living in the shelter of the most high, you're going to find rest in the shadow of the almighty. Psalm 91, verse 1, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And that's what that means. Verse 2, this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Trust in Jesus is our place of safety. He alone is our refuge. Write that on your heart. 
and believe it. That is the true faith, trusting him, believing him. And you'll be amazed at what he'll do. When you put forth just, just a little mustard seed of faith, he can do great things with it, but you have to make the effort to do it. You know, a lot of people, and don't take this the wrong way, folks, but a lot of people will say, pray for me because I'm going through this or pray for me. And yes, we should pray for others. But there's some who will say, pray for me, but then they don't believe what they're asking the other person to pray for. They don't believe it themselves. And then they wonder why it doesn't happen. It's like, well, somebody else can't carry your faith if you're only believing halfway for it. You know? You have to have trust in the Lord's word. And then he can do great things in your life. Psalm 94, 19. When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Do you believe, folks, that when doubts will fill your mind, that the Lord can give you great comfort and renewed hope and cheer? Because if you recite that verse and you understand that that's what it means, if you believe him that he can do that for you, then you'll have it. And then you won't be fearful. You won't be worried. You know, remember, folks, it's all about keeping your eyes on the Lord and not worrying about everything, but taking everything to prayer and trusting in his word. That's what I do. And it's what a lot of us do. It's like you've just got to keep handing it to him. You've got to take any negative thought and hand it captive to him. You know, declare it not. You know, somebody might get tested for COVID, which, you know, it's come out that's a fraud. And they'll think, oh, I have COVID. Oh, it's the end of the world. Pray for me. Pray. It's like, I'm not praying for you because I'm just going to declare it not. Stop declaring it. But the test, I'm like, I don't trust that test. I trust Jesus. See, it's about all, when you're living the faith, you're correcting wrong ways of thinking. You know, not only do we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God by teaching them and correcting them patiently. As we capture rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ, so we are doing that for ourselves. If we have a thought that is contrary to what the Lord's word promises about protection and his will for us, we need to be quick to hand that and surrender that to him in prayer and be anxious for nothing. When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, folks, don't focus on the waves. Don't focus on the storm. We have to put our priorities in the living God. We have to put them in Christ Jesus. We cannot be walking around, turning on the news and saying, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then running around with our you know, hands flailing and our heads spinning. No, no, no. Come on. We, we really need to prioritize what we're doing. That's why when I look out and I see all these things, like these protests and stuff, guys, or I see a rally, I'm like, these people have no idea what's coming. They say they believe, but when things really get bad, what are they going to do? Because they're spending all their time focusing on that than focusing on the Lord the way they need to be. And I'm not saying everyone's like that. I know that they're coming from a good place. I'm not calling them bad people. I'm just saying that priorities, misplaced priorities, need to be corrected. And that is why people are going to start being refined and going into wildernesses because they don't yet get that. And I'm going to be talking about some of the things that get us into that coming up in my next podcast soon to be released. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm praying that this podcast today, um, this mini cast, you know, I didn't really set no recording time on it. I just grabbed my microphone and started talking because, um, you know, I just look out upon things and I, I see here that when I sit here quietly to myself and I pray in the morning, I'm, I'm thinking to myself and I started to pray and then I, that's when I got the idea. I'm like, I need to go on and talk about that. And I believe the Lord, you know, said that was okay. So, you know, I'm going to jump off of here, guys. I need to finish my prayers and then get working on my refinement podcast because I've already been laying out my um, ideas and thoughts on that. And I'm going to be going over some um, examples coming up on that. And I think that, um, Glenda Lomax separately is going to be doing one concerning the wilderness. Um, so be looking forward to that too. But, you know, don't be afraid, guys. You know, remember, in all things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And on that, that's where I'm going to end it today. Jesus bless you. 
Stay vigilant. Y'all be safe out there. Remember to pray for one another. Remember to pray and keep the lost in your prayers no matter what. Remember to recite and believe these verses, guys. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Stay strong, guys. And until next time, take care of yourselves out there.